Elon Musk has just built a gigantic Starship rocket factory at the SpaceX testing facility of Starbase, Texas. This is Starship's equivalent of a Tesla Gigafactory, a first-of-its-kind operation that will mass-produce rockets with a speed and efficiency that is far beyond anything the aerospace industry has seen before. The first thing that we need to establish is our location for the Star Factory. This is positioned just up the road from the Starbase launch pad, which you've likely seen featured in any of the past four orbital flight tests. The current Star Factory site was previously occupied by three long tents. This is where the team manufactured Starship V-1, that's the rocket that we all know today, and while the tent system allowed SpaceX to get up and running very rapidly with Starship operations, it was far from an ideal solution. Elon has said that in the first phase of Starship manufacturing, everything was always covered in mud and dust, and there were birds everywhere. But the tents allowed for a level of flexibility that SpaceX required in those early days. Since there has never been anything like Starship built before, no one really knew what the finished product was going to look like, so the non-permanent nature of the tents allowed for rapid changes in the design and manufacturing process. So if you try something and it doesn't work, then you just scrap it and try something else. This is how we ended up with Starship rockets that in some cases were very different from build to build, and we generally saw that reflected in how successful or unsuccessful the vehicles were in action. That process of trial and error has finally come together into a new Starship design that Elon and SpaceX feel confident can accomplish some pretty ambitious goals a fully, rapidly reusable orbital vehicle that can transport people and cargo to the moon and Mars. Elon has said that the tent system becomes very inefficient once you know what you want to build, and that's where Starship V2 comes into play. This is the vehicle currently being manufactured inside the Star Factory. It's an evolution of the Starship that was born from years of trial and error and plenty of explosions along the way. The design of Starship V2, or sometimes called Block 2, is not radically different to the eye. It's going to be a little bit taller by about 2 meters or 6 feet. The biggest change really comes around the nose cone and the design of the aero flaps. Now, if we remember back to Starship Playtest number 4, we got an up-close view of that nose flap as it disintegrated throughout the re-entry process. That's not supposed to happen, by the way. And SpaceX definitely knew that their flap design wasn't ideal to begin with. Prior to that flight, Elon expressed some doubt that the hinge mechanism would be sturdy enough. He also wrote this post back in 2021 that said forward flaps will change a lot in the upcoming versions. But the team needed some real-world flight data to help steer them in the right direction. This is what they've come up with. The V2 nose flaps are more diamond-shaped with a distinct point at the trailing edge. That's going to help push the shockwaves from the atmosphere away from the ship's body and prevent too much pressure from building up under the wing. The V2 flaps are also mounted higher up on the nose. This will increase the amount of leverage that they can exert on the ship, and they are further back to the leeward side of the hull. This, again, will help reduce the amount of hot plasma that builds up underneath them on re-entry. In addition, we can see that the new flaps are about half the thickness of the originals, with a much lower profile hinge mechanism as well. As for the heat shield, we got a lot more tiles on the V2 nose cone. They wrap around to cover more of that leeward side of the vehicle and should hopefully prevent any future melting incidents. Now, it's very important to insulate up here because Starship has a header tank up inside the nose cone. That's where they store the propellant for the landing burn. Starbase reporters have already been able to watch the V2 nose cone segments being worked on inside the Star Factory because they do this step right next to one of the large windows. Okay, the manufacturing process that SpaceX is using inside the Star Factory is something that Elon has described as a linear adjacent flow, which seems to be a terminology that Elon made up himself because every result when you Google it is just people wondering what Elon meant when he said it and no one being able to give a straight answer. Even when asked about it on X a couple months ago, Elon only replied simple but essential principles. From what I've gathered, Star Factory production is kind of opposite to the standard moving assembly line that was championed by Henry Ford a hundred years ago, where a product moves down a conveyor belt and gradually has more and more stuff attached to it until it becomes a finished product. 
Elon knows from building Tesla vehicles that there is a lot of room for improvement over the old system. So this linear adjacent flow is probably something very similar or even exactly the same as Tesla's unboxed manufacturing process, which is all about building out separate segments of the car in parallel manufacturing, then bringing them all together at the very end. So instead of building the body of a car from front to back on one line, then adding doors, then sending it off to the paint shop, then putting it back on the line, then taking the doors off, then installing the seats, then putting the doors back on, you get my point. Unboxed means building the front of the car and the back of the car on two separate lines that run in parallel or adjacent to each other. So each half gets built, painted, seats, and interior installed all in one continuous process. On a third adjacent line, you build the sides of the car and the doors. Then at final assembly, you bring the front and the back together, you attach the sides and the doors, add the glass, add the wheels, and voila, you've got a finished car. When Elon talks about the production line in Star Factory, he says there are stations that things move through. Each station has specialized labor for each individual task, and the tempo at which the products move from one station to the next is the key to the whole process. That means no downtime, no waiting for the next thing to arrive. Continuous motion on the production line, the line itself does not move. Elon says that it doesn't matter if there's a conveyor belt. Now, here's how this plays out inside the Star Factory. The production process begins at the end of the building that's farthest from the road. This is where giant rolls of stainless steel are cut and welded into rings. These make up the body segment of the ship. The nose cone is a little more difficult. To make the pointy segment, the stainless steel needs to be pressed into shapes with a hydroforming machine. They do the same to make the round domes that form the tops and bottoms of the ship's fuel tanks. The rings then get stacked and welded together into segments, three to five rings per section. We can see that the roof line of the Star Factory gets progressively higher as it gets close to the road, and that corresponds with the rocket segments becoming taller as they move down the assembly lines. Near the end, everything is starting to look pretty much like a starship, and less like a pile of steel. We can see that SpaceX has different stations for mounting and checking heat shield tiles, for fitting and plumbing fuel tanks, for building thruster assemblies. They also have this big glass box full of computer desks. That would be a pretty cool place to work, I guess. But even the tallest segment of the Star Factory is too short to hold a fully assembled Starship. So, just like the Tesla unboxed line will build the front, back, and sides of the vehicle separately, SpaceX builds the top, bottom, and middle of the Starship in individual segments. So you'll see that the nose cone comes out of the Star Factory with its flaps and heat shield installed. There's a lot of plumbing and electrical going on inside. The middle of the rocket is mostly humongous propellant tanks with a lot of pipes running through them. And the bottom is where the magic happens, the thrust segment. Those three chunks then get brought out of the Star Factory and moved to the Starship equivalent of a general assembly area, the Mega Bay. Starbase has two megabays, and this is where the final rocket stacking takes place. The Raptor engines are installed, and all of the finishing touches that go into making the vehicle ready for action. We know that Elon Musk has some pretty ambitious goals for Starship production. This Star Factory might be the first, but it certainly won't be the last. Elon says that in the long term, he could see SpaceX building 1,000 Starships per year. That would be well into the Mars City building phase, but... In the short term, he thinks that the existing Star Factory can build around 100 rockets per year, or one every three days. SpaceX is also already laying the foundation for Star Factory 2 at their property on Cape Canaveral, near the launch pad that's also being constructed for Starship down there. That would, at the very least, double the rocket building to one every day and a half, and then with some added efficiency thrown in, all of a sudden, SpaceX could be building one rocket per day. The company is currently producing just under 200 Falcon 9 upper stage platforms per year, which will climb over 200 next year. That's a much more simple construction project than a Starship. The Falcon upper stage is basically just one engine and a payload adapter. But as long as the size of the manufacturing process can scale to the size of the rocket being built, then it's definitely far from the craziest thing Elon has ever said.